Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of the web altering improvements in Tableau 2020.4. If you went to Tableau conference virtually this year, you will have noticed a theme appearing. Literally everything is moving to the browser. Literally, I can't count how many times they said the browser. And so here we are with some of the first set of improvements coming uh, to the browser. Now I'm actually in Tableau online here and in my previous video, I actually built this map to showcase some of the offline uh, maps that are now available. If you using Tableau Server in restricted internet setups. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually open this and edit this map. I'm actually going to use this as the basis for showing you some of this improvements. Okay, let's start with the first one. Okay, so we're here now and one of the first improvements is the ability to add highlight actions in the browser. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Now, in previous versions, what you typically do is you'd actually uh, go to the um, uh, state option here, for example, which is colored on the map. And you wouldn't actually have this option to show the highlighter. You can see here that it's now there. If I click show highlighter, it actually appears here on the bottom. Let me move it up to the top. I actually can't move it to the top here because it's underneath all my labels. So that's a, it's a little bit of a quality of life sort of bug there. It's right underneath my face here as well. So that's not helpful there. Let me move my face out the way there. And you can see here that it's, um, you know, I can't move it up. So when you add these things, you just have to be careful that you're not sort of obscuring sort of what you're trying to do. Um, I would also go here and try and see if I could disable the labels here. Um, I could probably go to worksheets and um, see if I can disable the la labels. No, I don't think I can. I can't disable the labels. So I can't show or hide the labels. That's a real bummer. I can hide the caption. I can enable loads of other things, but I can't hide the labels. So unfortunately, the highlight state option is going to be stuck there. When we work with a dashboard though, I think we can actually move that. So let's go ahead to the next feature that has been improved in 2020.4 and see what that's like. Okay, the next thing is mark labels. Let me go ahead and actually just uh, move the map here a bit to the left and let's just see how that works, okay? So if I actually hold command on a Mac or control on a PC and drag state to labels, you'll see that it actually works exactly the same as on desktop. I'm actually able to put the state on labels. Now, what you can do is you can actually now control what is labeled. So before, what I couldn't do is go down here and essentially change how this particular pill behaves. To do that, you go to the label option. And uh, when I click on that, you get this little pop-up, which shows you the controls that you actually have. And I can actually choose what gets uh, labeled. So in this case, I'll just choose highlighted. And what that will do is it'll only show the label when something is highlighted. So now if I click out of that, you'll see that it updates. Now, this is a little bit slower in the browser than on desktop. I have to be honest with you guys. And when I click on Wyoming here, you see it takes a little while and then the label eventually shows up. This is not ideal. I was hoping this would be a little bit faster and a little bit zippier. Maybe there's something in early days of development, but it does take a little bit of time. If I deselect that, you see it takes a while to go away. What you can actually see there faded out is actually the underlying states um, coming through from the map. So that's why you can see that faded out there. But I'll click on South Dakota here. And again, that will come up a little later on. Now, if I click on Wyoming again, uh, it should be faster because it's cached, but unfortunately it's not. It's still a little bit slower. So that's just something to be aware of. It's not a like for like sort of speed uh, com comparison, but bearing in mind you're getting the full power of uh, Tableau in the browser, this isn't so bad. It's not so much of a, a compromise. Okay, the next thing is the ability to create extracts. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and add an Excel file. I actually have to add an Excel file here because the data source I'm connected to came from Tableau Prep. So of course that's already an extract if you think about about that sort of workflow. So what I have to do is go to connect to data, click on files, then upload from the computer. Now, what I thought was going on here is that when you actually upload a static file to the browser, I thought it was already creating an extract, but it turns out that's not what's happening. It's literally uploading the Excel file and it's connecting to the Excel file locally, which I, I didn't I didn't expect that to happen. It's almost keeping the original format of the file. I just thought it converted everything to um, an, ext an extract. So you see, you get here the same interface as you got before with desktop. And now if I drag the orders in there and um, I'm just going to drag the orders in. I'm not going to make this sort of complicated. Uh, just click update now so I can see some sample rows. That looks good. Now the ability to extract, if I go to sheet one, you'll see that my connection is there and you can see that it's just got the normal cylinder and this is not yet a, a sort of a, an extract. And another thing, I'm a little bit of a picky person. I've got a high definition screen here, so everything is nice and crisp, but these icons aren't high def yet. You can see these are visibly uh, much lower quality than even 
the text. So little note to Tableau, let's update these uh, nice images here to be vector files or SVGs so that they can be just as sharp as the rest of the interface. But never mind. Uh, if I right click on this file, you'll see there's no option here to extract the data source. So you've got to be sort of savvy with how the features are set up in the browser. The place you actually go to set up the extract is actually in the connection window. So if you go back to the edit data source, go over to the top right hand side, you can see that in the top right is an option to extract the data source. Now, when you click that extract option, there's an option here that says create extract. And actually, if you go ahead and do that, it's going to give you a warning. Essentially, data extracts have to be queued when you're creating them in the browser. So you can create the extract. And then basically, if you go ahead and do that, there's an elapsed timer, but this goes into a queue. So you could be waiting here for some time. Hence, you get this option to notify you when it's complete. If you tick that, um, you can set the save location as well for, for, for the extract. And then uh, you can close the editor. And now what this is going to do is it's going to let you know uh, when everything is ready to go. And uh, what will actually happen is your workbook will go back to sort of the finished state. So it kind of assumes that you're done, which isn't exactly what I had in mind. I actually thought he'd go back into the edit window and you'd be able to carry on. But if you see, I go back in there now, that job has finished. And now you can see I'm actually working with an extract in the browser. So a little bit of a strange workflow. In all honesty, I think what I would have preferred here is if you tick the extract option and you don't click the create extract option, you can then just go into sheet one and it triggers the extract in the background. So because I've already done this, I can't show you this flow, but that's the better thing to do. Tick the extract option, carry on working as you are, and eventually the extract gets queued in the background and it will automatically come through when it's ready to go. But if I go into sheet one, you can see here that now I'm back to an extract and everything is great. If I right click on this file, you'll see that I obviously don't have the option to uh, remove the extract if I want to do that, I have to go back to edit source and go back to the live connection. OK, so uh, it even gives you the last time the extract was updated. So this is kind of handy um, to have. And it's good to be aware that this exists. Now, if I go back into sheet one, I'm going to be able to show you the next flow, which is the ability to apply filters to worksheets from a dashboard. OK, in order to show you this, I have to build another view. So let's go ahead and build a very basic bar chart. I'm just going to take subcategory into rows and then sales into columns. I always build this the wrong way. You're not supposed to build and have ABC showing in the view, Tim. Come on. But nevertheless, um, I'll sort this in order of uh, sales and then we'll go ahead to the dashboard. So here we are in the dashboard sheet one and two. I'm so lazy with naming. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to drag in sheet two to the bottom here. So now we have two sheets. Now, if I go back into sheet two, what I want to do is actually add in a filter. In this case, I'm going to add in a segment filter because I'm actually going to call up this filter on the dashboard. For now, I'll just click all, click OK, go to the dashboard. And now that we're in the dashboard, remember earlier on I was complaining about this legend. I can actually get rid of it here because I'm actually using a uh, dashboard so I can actually control what's in the dashboard. Now you can see my highlight action here works so I can highlight different things and this is great. I can highlight the map that's doing exactly what I wanted to do. But now if I bring in the filter from this sheet, if I just go to this drop down and I hover over filters, you'll see that the segment filter is now there. So if I bring that in, you can see that that now shows. Now if I deselect items, you'll see that the bottom chart changes. But what I'd like to do is apply it to the top one. So let's hit all here. Let's go to the drop down filter and check this out. This is actually something great to see. This whole menu looks familiar. It's exactly the same as Tableau desktop. And you've even got the ability to apply it to selected worksheets. This actually makes dashboarding a real prospect in the browser because I can now choose exactly which sheet I want to target with my filter. Click OK. And now this filter is controlling both of them. So before you'd have to use the sheet as the filter you'd have to sort of think creatively. But now you can do that all in the browser and everything works really, really well. I think it's a really great improvement to have in the browser. The last one to show you is actually the ability to create fixed sets. Now, if I just go into this map here, uh, what you couldn't do before is essentially create a bunch of, um, circle a bunch of items here. So if I just go to uh, the circle tool here, I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to select a bunch of states. You can see there that they're selected. And when I do that, if I hover over any one of them, I get that pop up window, the context menu that I'm familiar with in Tableau. And one of the options there now is to create a set. Now, when you do this, it creates a set, but there's no sort of big signal other than the fact that on the left hand side, you can see that it's now highlighting the state set. So it's actually 
creating the set and it's right there, but you can't edit the set. So if you've got an issue, you've got to re delete the set and recreate it. The other thing you can do is you can, of course, uh, select another group of states and do the same thing again. And all it's doing isn't naming them. It's going to start naming them in sequential order, but I can also add it to the set if I... I can also add it to the previous set that I created. So this is a really sort of nice little hack. There's probably no obvious way that when you when you look at the uh, item here, you probably want to edit it here. But actually, the hack is to just go back into the view, select what you're trying to select. In this case, I think I'm actually somehow selecting the whole map here. And if I do that and I go click on the option, I can now remove from set or add to the set that I'd already created or even create a new set. So if I create a set, it names it state set two. And of course, I can actually now start renaming those to make more sense if it if it's necessary. So uh, there we have it. It's a really sort of nice quality of life improvement. These are big hitters. I mean, these sounds like small features, but these are some of the big features that stop power users from actually using the browser. And in some cases, even fixing workbooks in the browser. Essentially, I've, I've used web edit to fix workbooks on the fly. And now actually with some of these features, I can go in and fix some of those pesky filtering issues where maybe a filter has been mistakenly applied to something, I can actually go into browser and actually fix those on the go, which is great, even on an iPad, which uh, which is might be what I have while I'm uh, while I'm mobile. So that's pretty much it. That's the those are all the features in a nutshell. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video with other people that might find it useful. If you haven't, then hit the dislike button twice, and I'll catch you in the next video.